Hello, this is Retro Ahoy, and this is Game Over. In this episode, Road Rash, visceral motorbike racer, and arguably the most successful game series ever named after a colloquial term for an abrasive injury. Both published and developed by Electronic Arts, Road Rash made its first appearance on the 16-bit Sega Mega Drive or Genesis in 1991. Electronic Arts were founded in 1982 as a games publisher for home computer systems, and found their first success with titles such as Pinball Construction Set in 1983. The first game to be developed in-house was the threateningly titled Skate or Die in 1987, featuring a suitably radical array of skate disciplines and take-turn multiplayer with up to eight players. It was a reasonable first entry to EA's development catalogue. The into-the-screen racer format seen in Road Rash was pioneered by the grandfather of rearview racing games, Namco's Pole Position in 1982. This pseudo 3D format allowed for a convincing rendition of a racecourse receding into the distance, without the need for the processing power typically needed to render a 3D scene. Sega's Hang On in 1985 was similar, only this time featuring motorbikes in place of F1 cars, and with immersive arcade controls and Sega's superscalar technology, was pioneering in its own right. The late 1980s saw the rise of the rearview racer on the home consoles, and games such as Mac Rider on the NES in 1985 are a near antecedent of Road Rash, with into the screen racing and motorcycle combat. Road Rash took on a more realistic setting, featuring modern superbikes racing routes across a variety of California based locations, including Sierra Nevada, the Pacific Coast, Redwood Forest, Palm Desert, and Grass Valley, each with a distinct graphical style. The races were straightforward enough a pack of 15 high powered bikes, including the player, and several miles of California Highway. Get to the finish line in a top 4 position and you'd qualify, and the higher your placement, the greater your cash reward. Unlike a conventional racing game, the rules of engagement are a little more open in Road Rash. Ramming, attacking and otherwise impeding the progress of your opponent is not only permitted, but at times required to secure your victory. Your foe of course has the same idea, and some have even prepared for the fight, packing weapons such as clubs and chains to make their blows more devastating. However, with a deftly timed swipe, you can relieve your opponent of their burden, and even add insult to injury by using it against them. These high-speed fisticuffs are as risky as they sound, of course, and at any time you're only one high-speed collision away from a quarter-mile slide over rough tarmac. Falling off your bike costs valuable time and damages your bike as well, and so, once separated, getting back in the saddle quickly is your top priority, as winning the race on foot is unlikely. Of course, these no-holds-barred illegal street races attract some attention from law enforcement, and police motorbikes do indeed make an appearance, their intent being to stop your race in its tracks and to impose a hefty fine. Bike wrecks are costly too. Take too many knocks and you'll be forced to drop out of the race, with a sizeable repair bill on your hands. Ultimately, your cash is your main concern. Should your balance hit zero, it's game over. Earn enough from racing, and you'll be able to trade in your old bike for something with a little more performance. There are 8 bikes to choose from, each with different power curves and handling traits. But in general, the more expensive the ride, the faster you'll be able to go. For the higher level races, you'll need a better bike to stand a chance, but faster travel leaves less margin for error in the tighter turns. As you progress, high level races feature more aggressive, differently garbed opponents, more obstacles and longer races, testing both your endurance and ability to aggressively fend off your opponent. Road Rash spawned a number of sequels, expanding on the original game's premise. In 1992, Road Rash 2 saw more diverse locales, featuring races all over the United States rather than just California. It benefited from a touch more polish, better menu navigation, more varied gameplay and a two-player mode. 1995 saw another sequel in Road Rash 3, this time featuring locations from all over the globe and more realistic digitised sprites in place of the hand-drawn style of the original. Gameplay was largely the same as its predecessors, with a familiar format. The dawn of the 32-bit era saw a transition for many franchises to the third dimension, and Road Rash was no exception. Panasonic's ill-fated foray into the console market, the 3DO, had its very own version of Road Rash that took the series into the next generation. With FMV cutscenes, full 3D environments, and a licensed soundtrack, it truly was state-of-the-art. This version was later ported to the PlayStation and PC, and an all-new version for the Nintendo 64, 
creatively titled Road Rash 64, was developed by THQ. The PlayStation had a follow-up in Road Rash Jailbreak in 1999, with an altogether less realistic style, favouring caricatures of biker gangs and improbable physics. Jailbreak marked the last Road Rash title, receiving only mixed reviews. A reboot was planned in recent years, with a new Road Rash title intended for release on Xbox Live Arcade, although it seems this project was cancelled at an early stage, with the only evidence of this project's existence being some early concept footage. Road Rash is the quintessential motorcycle combat game, and no doubt later games have taken influence from its style. LucasArts Full Throttle in 1995 had a combat section similar in execution, although with a full frontal view of the action instead. Expansion to GTA 4 The Lost and Damned similarly featured motorcycle racing and combat, although the game generally subscribed more to the drive-by school of violence rather than Road Rash's pugilistic style. Electronic Arts have, of course, gone on to great things, now generally known by the abbreviated EA moniker. They still oversee in-house development, with EA Studios such as EA Canada, their largest and oldest studio, in operation since 1983 and responsible for the FIFA and NHL series, amongst many others. EA also own a number of external studios, including DICE, BioWare, Visceral Games and Criterion Games, who were recently responsible for the arcade racer Burnout Paradise, which introduced motorbikes to the Burnout series for the first time. Not quite Road Rash, but with a similarly reckless approach to road safety. Road Rash is a definitive game on the Sega 16-bit platform, and one that spawned a number of successful sequels. Its blend of high RPM racing and brutal violence made for a satisfying experience. And while the series petered out slightly with the arrival of 3D games, the original titles remain entertaining today. This has been Road Rash, and this is Game Over. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join me next time for the finest eggy adventure of the 8-bit era, with Dizzy, the ultimate cartoon adventure. <laughs>